Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my shop for day two on this radio. Um, so I did manage to remove a couple of capacitors from it, and it's worth testing these. And again, you know, the different style of capacitors here really suggest this came from a junk box. I don't, can't be sure of that, of course. So the test I'm going to do here is uh, to find out if the uh, internal internals inside the capacitor have become conductive, usually from moisture penetration. And once once moisture gets inside these, or chemistry occurs, some of these have chemically active materials inside them in the paper and whatnot that's inside. And uh, some chemistry can occur over the years too, without moisture. Okay, here we go. So uh, the, what what the test does? It puts 50 volts onto the capacitor. If no leakage current flows whatsoever, this eye will be open like this. When I first hit the switch, there's a charge flow that flows into the capacitor, and that will cause the eye to close. It's, you can't tell it from a leak. But after that takes place, after the charge takes place which just happens almost instantaneously and then you see how far open these eyes the eye came a good capacitor will look just like this it'll just pop right open here we go that's definitely not a good capacitor it's open a little bit so on the scale of capacitors that I have tested in here this guy's quite bad this is poor definitely a poor poor test and that was only 50 volts that's nothing. Okay, 50 volts on the Hunts. Oh, so this is a Hunts. These are well known for being bad actors. Let's see if it's true. Huh. Let's see that again. Okay, 150, 150 volts. Still opening just about all the way. Probably won't open on 250 open about halfway. So as capacitors go, this one's in actually not so bad condition. And it may be that this particular Hunts capacitor isn't as old as others that I've come across. Hunts, I believe they're made in Britain. I believe, I believe, I believe. And this one, this one looks like a German. Germany, it says Germany. on There's no way that these came from a uh, somebody shop supply or shop stock. And if you look at my uh, stock, yeah, yeah, I have a bunch of this stuff like this. Not a lot of this kind of stuff, but uh, they have all brand new capacitors. They all look the same. They're from the same manufacturer, of course. So, talking about capacitors, let's carry on. There's one on the back there by the antenna. And then we've got this guy over here. Uh, four or five more inside the chassis here which uh, when molded two three four and then this thing I haven't, haven't yet determined where this is in the circuit or what it is this this black one that somebody put in it looks like an electrolytic capacitor um, So that's it. That's what I'm going to do. These look all look pretty straightforward, really. One. I'll leave that in for now. We'll do one, two, three, four. How do you count five? Yeah, five on the antenna. We'll do the five one. And what we'll see, and, you know, at this point the radio is not operating very well at all. It's not humming anymore, but it's not doing much else. We'll see what happens after these capacitors are changed out. Okay, so I finished replacing the capacitors, all but this one, and I've started investigating this. This is kind of interesting what's going on here. But first, a couple of capacitors I removed. We should test. I always like to test capacitors I take out, uh, just because I think it's better to know than to guess what's going on. Here we go. This is a big point one. 50 volts. 
watch in the eye there. Garbage. Fifty volts. One fifty. Close to the garbage. It should be in the garbage, it should be. But as capacitors go, it's not as... I think, you know, in many uh, uh, positions in a radio, a capacitor like that would still be serviceable. There we go. 50. Not this one. And now, how about this? Who made, who made, this is a Sprague. 50. 150. Well, that's the best of, of them so far. Now, don't I have one more? I thought I had one more in here. Somewhere, one more. I do. I have a. Don't I? Maybe not. Maybe not. If I do, we can test it later. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the, the curious black capacitor. Tell you what makes this capacitor even more curious here. Is this one. So this is the only uh, disc capacitor in this whole radio. And if you look, So it was shorted onto a pin, but that pin is actually soldered over anyway, so it wasn't shorted. This guy's in parallel with this one. What's going on? This looks like it says 0.01 on it. So I want to find this position. So this is a ground point. Back to the uh, back to the B minus. So it's all up to this position here, which is which has got a resistor on it. 22.2 mega ohms on it. Sounds like the resistor heading for the AVC. Uh, I don't know that though. 2.2 mega ohms on it, and it's got another resistor down here, the value of which I can't read. Two resistors, and at least one capacitor, because I think somebody put two in to try to get up to where they need to get to. Something crazy like that. So let's take a look on the uh, schematic here. Um, so, so 2.2, it'd be smarter to look here. There's a 2.2 in R3. Is there any more? That's it. There's only one 2.2 mega ohm resistor, R3. So we'll take a look at R3. R4. R3. So here's R3. And sure enough, it's the AVC. Um, it's the ABC, I don't know what to call it, resistor. Um, this resistor is protecting the very high impedance on this side. It's going to the grids. You can look at it that way. So there it is, and then there's another resistor. There's two more. There's two more off of this. Two capacitors. Oh boy, oh boy, what has he done? So this one goes over to the tone control, or the volume control, rather. Uh, I know which one that is. That's neither of them. That's nowhere near them. It's nowhere near there. Um, well, 2.2. One other resistor, not two other resistors. How, how does that work? How, how does that work? How do you get? How do you get 2.2 here? And oh, one other resistor. Uh, and this would be a terminal point here. There's no capacitors connected to this line in, in, in this in this section. What's he done in there? Um, this isn't adding up. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What is going on here? Now, 
couldn't trace this simply. It just didn't work out. This capacitor, this oh, there's a wire coming off. Yeah, the wire's not it's not a wire. It's doing this resistor. 2.2 mega ohms, and the one down there. Let me see if I can get the size of it. I can't be sure what it is. A little tiny resistor down there. Um, so why would this point not be what I think it is? I think this point I'm holding on to here. If we look on the schematic. Um, it has to be one of these four t these terminals. Which which can am I on? Let's get that sorted out first. So I think I'm on uh, number one IF. That doesn't make sense. With the 22 there, that would be number two. And the second IF. First IF. Is there a diagram for that? I don't have to think about it. Yes, there is. T1, T2. T1. T1, the uh, uh, front of the radio. So T1 is near the front of the radio. So this is T1. This T1, what's it doing with this? Resistor. something all really messed up here. Um, okay, so how else can I identify this? Yeah. Wow. Well, the other terminal from the transformer goes straight to this tube. Straight to or straight from that tube. Oh my god, I'm not going to be able to do this. One, two, three, four. It's pin five on the, uh, what tube is that? Pin five on the 12BE6. Pin five on the 12BE6. Pin five on the 12BE6. Where are you? Pin five. It's the plate. So this would mean the uh, wire I'm looking at is this one. Come on. There's no way. There's no way. Then I've got these flipped around and I'm really looking at this line. Capacitor. So if this is it, this could very well be it right here between R3 and R1 connected direct to a terminal with a capacitor coming off of it. This capacitor I'm looking at is two in parallel that go to ground. They're doing what this one's kind of doing. I think this is a big mess up in the radio. Uh, uh, so. This is always tricky when, when you find something that doesn't match. So this this would match, well it's coming from the other terminal. Is this here? Let's find out if C, C9 exists. C9 would be coming from the other terminal going to ground. All right, C9, all right. So other terminal, be this one under here, unless I got the transformer turned around somehow. I think so. No capacitor in sight. Ah. Uh, what has he done here? Am I, am I, I'm not seeing this right. No. Oh, these two capacitors are definitely just in parallel through here. Oh my, 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 my. 
and they really do look like uh, replacement capacitors. <clears throat> I'm gonna lift them off the ground here. They're they're leaving anyway. They're leaving eventually. This one is how big? Oh my gosh! Twenty at thirty-five volts. What? What? What the heck? It is electrolytic. What is going on here? And then this one. This is uh, looks like 0 .01 written on it. <clears throat> what was somebody trying to do with a 20, 35 volt? Oh my gosh. Well, I think it's on the secondary side of the transformer, so the high voltage isn't really there, but still. Well, I think what i got to do is I'm just going to have to follow the schematic and uh, restore this the way it appears on the schematic. So, I get rid of both of these guys. I can't believe this. A 20. You'd expect a 20 at 35 volts to be a bypass capacitor for the cathode resistor on the output tube. I don't think this is anywhere near that. Nowhere near it. Hey, let's test these two capacitors. Let's see what's up. They really have a 20 in there? Is that really what happened? We'll do the disc one first. It's probably going to be good. My impression, I think everybody would agree, a disc type capacitors are highly reliable guys. So 50 volts, ping, right open, 150, right open, 250, right open, yeah. So this really, oh we can measure the capacitance of this too. Let's do that. Point oh one. So this capacitor is actually perfectly serviceable. This one is not going to be electrolytic. 50 volts, put the positive lead on the positive side, fifty volts. I actually don't expect this to be a bad it's a thirty-five volt capacitor, I got fifty volts on it. It's nothing it appears to be nothing wrong with it. Oh let's measure the uh, value of it giving it a moment to discharge here. Okay, this is supposed to be a 20, so it should be on this scale somewhere. Oh, there it goes. And this would be on uh, the 0.1 to 50. So it should be 50, so this would be measuring, that's 10, 20, 30, it's measuring around 30 on here, so uh, I don't know how accurate my guy is at that point in the range, but the capacitor is not dead. So those are I, 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 actually functioning. What in heaven's name was it doing in there? Uh, so look, that is a good question. Looking at the schematic here. I have a big 20 microfarad capacitor on this terminal going to B minus. What would that do? So I look, look in here. So I think it's this terminal. Well, well, I don't know what to say actually. Uh, Well, this might have been why that radio wasn't working. <laughs> this might be the reason right here. Uh, I can't really interpret what would happen there. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but, so, but we do want to put something on this pin. That pin should have uh, a capacitor C10 and not going to ground though. C10, let's take a look at what the value is C10. C10.01. So there was a 0.01, 
in there. I'm gonna get one of mine out. Oh, I think I hear a cat. Here's a point oh one, but it doesn't it doesn't go to doesn't go to ground. Peanut, what's happening, man? It's a cat. It's not a man, he's a cat. A male cat. Peanut, come in. Come on. No, I can't come out. I'm busy. I'll come out and play later, okay? Later, is that okay? Jimmy can't come out and play right now. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> but I see shadows out there too, so the two of them are goofing around together. So let's figure out where this capacitor is really supposed to go. Uh, put the schematic back up here. This uh, uh, down to this line. Wait a minute. That, wait a minute. Wait a god and big a minute. That is B minus. It's, it's this one that's odd. This is the one that's going to the chassis over here on this other terminal. So that is correct then. Where he had it is correct. B minus. He had it in the correct spot. But it's only supposed to be a 0.01, not a 20. Probably wouldn't make any difference, you know that? It probably wouldn't, because uh, you know if you overdo this, uh, you know this capacitor is supposed to look pretty much like a short circuit at RF frequency. So you put a bigger, bigger one, it's just a better, better short circuit. So probably did no harm. Why he did that, and it couldn't explain why the radio is quiet. Okay, we'll put we'll put this capacitor in and try to figure out. Uh, See, I probably already changed this one. Probably already done. Uh, 0 0.01. Good. Right. 0 0.01. 0 0.01. So I think at this point everything is just fine. The uh, other capacitor is, is uh, that should be in there is this one. I already put it in. So according to the schematic, this radio is wired just as it should be. For some reason, somebody stuck a 20 microfarad capacitor in there where it wasn't needed. Okay. Uh, so, will this make this radio work? Well, that's a good question. Why don't we find out? Let's find out. I think I've put my finger through that speaker cone a few times now. I've certainly hit it with my finger, I know that my best not to put my finger through it. I should have put a protective cover on it. Should have. Okay, I'll do a clean up here before we switch on. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I, I left, I left one. That's okay. That's doing nothing. Uh, you know what? It is doing something. Uh, hey, let's take a look at that on the schematic. That's it there. That's what I thought it was. It doesn't look to be in that position there. It says uh, L1 is deleted on this radio. So looking back at it... Oh, you know what? I, I, yeah, I saw something wrong. Yeah, it is exactly like this. So if you're going to hook up an external antenna, it's going to run through that capacitor and then hook up here. I'm not going to worry about the capacitor right now. It's, it's not going to have any impact. At least I'm pretty sure it won't have any impact. Okay, little radio switches off. Power is on. Now, of course, we're going to run through the dim lights there because of these changes I've made to the radio. Switch on. Perfect. Good.
what are you going to say this time, Mr. Little Radio? Come on, man. Hmm. Is that it? Oh. <laughs> okay. Yuck. It's not that blah, 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 blah stuff. So that, that's called motorboating. That usually is due to, uh, I, I believe anyway, I understand, uh, feedback problems on the ABC line. Well, when you tune in something, this is probably just noise I've tuned in, but you can hear that that uh, rumble is modulating the What happened? Holy smokes! I haven't tested the vacuum tubes yet. Maybe one of them's half out. I thought that was making a difference, but it didn't really. Well, okay. Something's wrong here. <laughs> Something's still wrong in this radio. Only this time I think it's a little more serious. Now, uh-oh. So, one of the last people in here was doing their own thing. I wonder if there's more of his own thing in here. I just thought I saw a short circuit there, but no. Close, but not quite. Well, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of where we're at at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, I gotta stop and think about how I want to approach this and try to track down what is going on in the radio that's making such a weird, weird sound. But, well, I think what, what uh, I should like to do now is test the tubes, even though I don't think there's really much chance that that effect has anything to do with the tube, but why not do it now? Now is a good time to, to get rid of it. And have you all noticed the string on this radio, which I have not commented on? Look, it looks like jute. It looks like binder cord for crying out loud. That can't be the original string. Wow. Hmm. Amazing it works. Okay, I got the first two out, and it's the 12BE6. Okay, let's go over. lighting right so the pointer will show up on here. That's pretty ugly lighting. Well, let's get going here. 12BE6. 12B. 12BE6. There he is. 13. 4. 8. 
five, one, seven, six, three, three thousand on the bottom. Forty one sensitivity C for the plate connection. Hold two, test it at once. So it'll be six. Thirteen. Now this tube came up a little bit on, oh! Oh, hmm. I don't know what to make of that. Let's the rest. Hmm. It's certainly showing us short, isn't it? Okay. Um, can't say I get false indications with this tester at all, so I think I'm going to get a new 12BE6. But I think I should test the rest of the tubes first before jumping into that. Maybe there's more. Okay, here we go with the next to 12 BA6. I think I've got this set now. Let's just double check. 12 BA6, 13. That's the voltage. 4, 10 L, 52763. 52763. 41, 33. C. Okay. Shorts indicated. This tube should test right around just under a thousand. So if it's above a thousand, she's good. Oh, okay. That's two, two duds, two, two duds, two bad. Well, one dud and one parent short. We don't really know how good the tube is actually working. Oh, well, let's go for the output tube now. So this one is a, is that a 50B5, if I remember right. 50, can't quite read it. So one thing I have learned is uh, read the label on the tubes. Don't trust what's in the radio. 50B5. Okay. 50B5. Oh, so let me get this guy set up. 50B5. Okay, let's try this output tube. 50B5, 47 on the heater. Four. 16H. Five one seven six three. Five one seven six three. 4500, 4500, zero, zero. good. Shorts. And he is supposed to come up 1200, so 12, up, 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 up above about here. So it's kind of right on the line. That's going to be fine, I think. That's not enough to get rid of it. Okay, got a two, got a good one that time. The next tube coming out would be the uh, this is the rectifier tube. Rectifier tube is a 35Z5. 35Z5. I'll just leave the camera rolling here. 
35, like I'm gonna fix the lighting for me, you can't see. 35, 35 and five. So 35, no signal, no bias, 07, 07, 003. 07, 003. 0610, 0610, 23. Make the meter read correctly. Make it read what they want it. E. We are ready now. Put in a rectifier tube. Well, checking 35 0700 Or if this tube can't be completely shot, then the radio would have no hope of operating. But this, along with the output tube, are the two tubes you generally expect to wear out uh, because they uh, run hot. They work hard. Shorts. No shorts. I don't see any heater in there. Uh, I don't think this uh, I'll use is working. So we'll flip the rectifier switch and it should come up here. Rectifier is okay. Yeah, something went wrong there. Okay, watch this light. Okay, something uh, something is amiss. Something, did I not get the number? I, did, I didn't double check the last ones very carefully. 0610. 0610. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Is this, this isn't the 35Z5. That's what's going on here. What is it? 35W4. Didn't I say something about always check the number? 35W4. Bozo I am sometimes, I tell ya. Uh, that's only me checking up on myself. 35W4. Wow, okay, I'm lucky something stupid didn't happen that time. 35W4, almost the same thing. 00763, certainly not here. 00763. When I do tube tests, it's more like a torture test than it is a tube test. Zero one, zero zero, twenty-five sensitivity. E, good show. Now did I really get the right one? Thirty-five W four. Zero zero seven six three. Zero zero seven six three. I'm just double checking. O one O. Let me see something about O one O O. That's not right. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to risk my tube test here again. That was better. I saw the light flash. Lucky break. I don't think these uh, machines are necessarily error tolerant. This one, I don't think is error tolerant. Okay, any short circuits in there? Nope. Okay, so it should come up above here. And it tests just fine. Okay. I tried destroying that tube, just it couldn't quite do it. And now we have one more left. So we're two we're two for four. Half and half. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Now I'm gonna follow my own advice here for a change. Uh, this looks like an EV. Maybe it's an AT. Twelve AT six. Yeah, twelve AT six. Thirteen. 
one. Twenty-eight L. Five one seven six zero. Five one seven six zero. Zero three zero zero. Zero three zero zero. Thirty-five F. Ready to do one part of the. We're doing the uh, triode part here first. Seven eighty, up around, up around that number fifty. If you, oh, I can't see it. Up around the number, up around the number fifty. Oh, baby, the pointer is is going up, but can you even see it? I can kind of see it going up a bit. It's another dud. Wow, this is like how do these tubes get this bad? How do you get this many bad tubes in a radio? Okay, well that's one part of the tube. I mean, it's it's, it's shot. Or did I do did I make it? Uh, did I make a mistake? Check this out. Thirteen. Step on fifteen. No signal. Oh, oh 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 wrong one. Signal one. Twenty eight. L, that's correct. Five one seven six zero. Five one seven six zero. Zero three zero zero. Zero three zero zero. Yeah, that's all correct. F on the plate. Well, it's dead. But we will we will test the other part. Now the other the other part is uh, ooh, that's really in there loose. The other part out. One seven six one O one seven six three. O one seven six three. P zero zero zero. P zero zero zero. Sensitivity forty five. Plate connection is A this time. This is probably the main control you don't want to be swinging around while you have a tube in the socket. There you go. Wow, there's a lot working against this radio if all these tubes are as bad as they appear to be. So this time we're looking, we're, we're testing a diode. And all it's, a diode. And all it's got to do Two diodes, P1 and P2, plate one, plate two. All it's got to do is get up here above the diodes OK setting. And check for shorts just in case. Not going to make it. So well, the reason it's not making it, let's try the other plate. They, all three functions in this tube are bad. And that kind of indicates the cathode is spent in this tube. The cathode is either contaminated, worn out, something like that. Uh, that would be from very high mileage or very rude operation. Um, from bad capacitors that might have been in there or other problems in the radio at some point in its history. So that's another. That's that's actually you know, less than 50%. I yeah, have three, three dead dogs here. Okay, so I'm going to get three replacements and we'll put them in. And this is one of the few times where, wow, the tube testing really is going to make a difference here. So i got to go fetch those tubes. Okay, let's see what I've got here. 12BA6. Well, 12BE6. Um, you know what? I don't think I have any 12 at Six tubes uh, handy. I'm sure I've got some somewhere. Oh, I gotta go hunting. I have to go a big hunt now. 
on AT6. Well, a little bit of quick research and checking in my old tube substitution handbook, it turns out a 12AV6 can be substituted for a 12AT6. Now, all the tubes I've got in these bags, they've all been tested. I have not made an individual record of each individual tube, but the only thing that are in these bags are working tubes. Any one of them is good enough. Good. So I've got I've got the replacements I need. So I'm going to pop them in that radio, and we're going to see what's going to happen. Okay, I think we're ready for another try here. This is practically a, a brand new radio at this point. Half its tubes new, capacitors. Wow. Okay, switch is off. Plug is in. So, we'll, we'll turn it on with this guy. Are we ready? Sure. Okay, I've just stuck the light in the back there. Get it out of the way. Fire one. Okay, we got good, good dim bulb behavior there. What are we going to get this time? Wonder if I should change that string. The clicking, I believe, is interference being received. Wow, well, it's not too bad. It's working. I need something I can try a speaker on. Where's that nice low rumbly strange sound? Did that go away? Maybe that went away. Due to the bad tubes maybe? Here we are. Okay, I'm gonna give it to the speaker. Give it. Well, hard, hard to say with that kind of noise, but the uh, speaker doesn't seem bad. Well, it's just back to life. Now it's a question of just making it nice and strong with a little bit of alignment. Beautiful. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, next video we will do the alignment on the radio. Any finishing work that's required, get it back in its cabinet and send it on its way to its new home, wherever that is. Thanks again for watching.